Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Tuesday, the 28th day of September 2021. It's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. You've tuned into it. Great to have you here. Can you believe we've only got two days left and September is over? And then we're going to get into October, and that's probably going to be a very busy month, especially as we progress to and through the middle part towards the end of October and maybe even into November this hurricane season. I believe is destined to be up there easily in the top two, top three, top two, and maybe an outside chance that it's one of the busiest ever, maybe the busiest in terms of name storms. We've got a long way to go to beat that record. Of course, that was last year, but it has definitely been very busy, and I think it's going to stay that way uh, in the days and weeks to come. And here's a big reason why. We look at the National Hurricane Center homepage. This is the remnants here of Peter. This is, of course, Category 4 Hurricane Sam. Look at that pressure down there still at 952 millibars, adding on to the major hurricane days that we've had, which, by the way, those have exceeded the major hurricane days that we had last year. So that metric has already surpassed, surpassed what we had in 2020. And, of course, this is also generating ACE points every day, adding to our seasonal ACE score, which is now uh, well above 100. We're moving north of 100, and the ACE will continue to rise throughout the rest of the season, uh, probably because one of these two systems will develop. If I had to place my bets, I would do it on this system here. That's 90L. Look how far south both of these are, by the way. South of 10 degrees latitude, 10 degrees north latitude is right there. In both of these to the south of that mark and um, they're you know in an area where the Coriolis force is not quite as impactful you need them to be a little bit farther to the north I mean look there's five north right there it's almost like what you would see out in the West Pacific but nevertheless I think one of these this easternmost uh, feature in best area 90 L I think that one goes on to develop and it should stay out in the open Atlantic somewhere like this and this feature, some of this energy may end up over in the Caribbean with time, and it might try to develop a little bit over here. The bottom line, there's just a lot to watch, at least nothing directly impacting land, and I don't think that will change anytime soon. Here's the satellite animation for this afternoon. There's Sam. Here's our remnants of Peter over here. This is 91 and 90L, part of this complex monsoon trough that's happening, an area of convergence and rising air and just general favorability very slow going with development again very reminiscent of what we see with these large typhoons out in the west pacific looks a lot like that here to the south uh, west of the coast of africa let's zoom in now and take a look at sam still going pretty strong has a pretty large eye there not nearly in fact no lightning detected in the last little while around the eye in the core area all the lightnings out here in the periphery region of Sam, but it still has very well established outflow and a solid core there. Uh, well developed hurricane moving along well to the east of the islands over here. No worries for you guys, it's not going to come west. They don't just do that. People say they have a mind of their own. Well, no, not really. And science has come far enough that we know it is not going to suddenly turn west and impact the islands over there. And it's looking pretty good for our friends over here in Bermuda. Bermuda is right there as I zoom in on it. And it's, as it, at its closest approach to Bermuda, it looks like it would be, uh, on our little distance calculator, about 279.66 miles, right? Pretty neat feature that we've got. But seriously, Bermuda outside of the cone, which is good by uh, at least 100 miles, and the rest of the impacts there should stay well away from Bermuda. And hopefully, as well as we broaden this out, this particular trajectory will take this to the east of Newfoundland up here. Just too much low pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere uh, in and around SAM. The heights, as we call it, are just not there to send this more to the west. That ship has sailed, so to speak. We have strong high pressure over the eastern Atlantic. I'm just kind of making this really simplified. And we have strong high pressure over the western Atlantic and parts of the lower 48 and in between is this weakness and that is the channel that Sam is taking and that's it it should stay out in the open Atlantic only of interest generally speaking to shipping interests out there but it will generate those swells all along its path there that will come out 
and eventually those swells will impact the land and you could get some overwash if those swells are high enough especially since we're coming up to a new moon here in the next several days um, and I'll talk about that later once we get more data once Sam rounds that corner there into the southwest Atlantic and starts generating those swells that will eventually make their way towards Florida the Carolinas and on up into the Northeast and Atlantic Canada uh, we'll focus in on what to expect from that later on alright so the GFS here painting a pretty easy to understand picture of what's happening there's that high pressure area on the GFS that I was showing you on the track map high pressure over the eastern United States into the extreme western Atlantic but in between is this weakness in here and Sam will find that and head on out pretty simple uh, kind of a done deal so to speak but let's see what the rest of the pattern looks like there goes Sam the vorticity you see it very well developed there and out it goes this is a, uh, about five days out a little close to the eastern part uh, Cape Race and vicinity St. John's there not going to want to just ignore this and they don't and look at that how it tries to kind of pivot in and become part of this larger low pressure area up here kind of capturing Sam and pivoting it in around we got to watch for that it could be a pretty huge gale center over the colder waters up there that could bring some problems but what else let's see what else develops let's go backwards there's 91 L this is 90 L and again they are so far south in latitude pretty remarkable to see that they move along here there's 48 hours out so about day two knocking on the door there the last day of the month Thursday morning this could be a depression maybe a name storm if so this could be V for Victor and that's a smaller feature it might develop that could be Wanda so we'll put a W there I, you know you never know it's a little bit weaker overall and it could get absorbed in the circulation of uh, what could possibly be Victor there but it does move on off to the west sort of by itself as we get out to day four and what would be Victor there strengthens out over the open Atlantic moving off to the north but then that other piece of energy we gotta watch this as it moves in towards the windward islands here gonna bring impacts even as a tropical wave this is beyond the, t the five day time frame there's day six and finally out at day seven we'll stop there and this is interesting because now we're starting to see some vorticity and energy start to pile up in the Caribbean and we're now out to October 5th I still think it's a few days after that near the 10th that we really start to set things up to being more favorable there and I'm going to show you why real quick over here on the 200 millibar chart we're going to go way up at about 40,000 feet um, and look you see this big area of anticyclonic uh, high, uh, well it's a ULAC as we call it upper level anticyclone ULAC just fancy way of saying it's a big anticyclone or area of high pressure way up here at 200 millibars again where the jets fly and uh, most commercial air traffic 35 40,000 feet but watch what happens we'll go backwards and you see how that's that big area of high pressure develops and expands westward into the Caribbean there so the entire area once we get out to day 10 and I will show you this on you know out to day 10 because it's such a huge feature again we try to be real careful not dropping day 10 single images of a hurricane parked over somewhere we've been through all that before that's a very small feature in the overall larger pattern and that's a big no-no people shouldn't do that on social media and even in a discussion you know maybe if you want to point out some things to look for but this this big puzzle piece here this giant signal um, which is shown up in the guidance the EPS guidance from the euro for example showing upward motion developing into the Caribbean once we get into October that makes more sense to show and there it is in the operational guidance it's going to show up in the ensemble guidance as well I'm sure so the pattern will be there for favorability the pattern will be built then will there be low pressure energy uh, vorticity sources tropical waves a Central American gyre you know energy coming off of Colombia whatever a seedling will there be a seedling to take advantage of this situation and we get a, a system to develop that remains to be seen and that's the feature uh, that we just can't figure out this far out but that big signal right there 
is really, really important as we go forward into the month of October. All right, some other things related to it. You know, Andy Hazelton down there at HRD, uh, et cetera, at the University of Miami, watching this as well, hinting about it, that one note of interest as we head into October is how much of the Caribbean has warmed throughout September. I mean, wow, look at that spike. Uh, anybody's stocks doing that, then good for you. We know oil prices are, but that's a story for another day. When it's in the uh, Caribbean or anywhere in the ocean, you see a rise like that, it is pretty significant. Now, luckily, you got to look at the scale, and you see that these are separated by tenths of a degree Celsius, so it's not that dramatic, but it's still dramatic nonetheless that back in the middle part of the month, we were close to average here, and then it has spiked up to... Uh, getting close to eight tenths of a degree, so 0.8 above average. And you, again, let me just, you think about, really, Mark, 0.8 above the long-term average? Like, would you even notice that? No, you wouldn't if it was a glass of water or probably even your bathtub. But when you're talking about the vast expanse, and it's pretty big, of the Caribbean, this area warming up over that large area of real estate, that 0.8, and that's the average there. Some areas are higher than the average. Remember, the average is made up of a lot of different observations. So the mean is 0 0.8. There's are, there are areas in the Eastern Caribbean that are quite a bit warmer than that 0 0.8. You understand? So that's a lot of extra energy in the region that's available as we get into October. This is a different data set. It just depends on which base you're looking at that you're developing these averages from. Both of them, the different metrics, showing very warm in the Caribbean as we head into October and and into November, too, really. This could really go on to where we get a lot of activity. And South Florida, I keep telling you, that area has to be watched the most as we get into October. That's the busiest time of when we get major hurricanes to hit Florida is October by just a little bit. It's true. Look it up sometime if you don't believe me. More hur major hurricanes, Cat 3 or 4 for Florida Peninsula anyway in October than any other month. All right, real quick, want to point this out. Last night I was a guest on uh, Weather Brains with James Spann et al. And one of those et al., you know, other people and others, was none other than Dr. Neil Frank. And for me to be on the same show with this legend, uh, and if you don't know who Dr. Frank is, and some of you might be a little young, and you're like, yeah, I've heard of that. Who is that? Look him up and watch the episode. I'm going to put the link in the description of today's video. Uh, it's also on Weather Brains. You can just follow them. Or James Spann, who's got a whole bunch of followers anyway. So if you're following Mr. Spann, you've already seen the, the tweet. If not, follow uh, James or follow Weather Brains. Check out the link in today's video. Fascinating conversation here with Dr. Frank. Uh, different people that were asking questions. See if I can scroll around in the video. Um, uh, different folks on the panel, myself included. And then I come in later on. There I am, right there, talking about um, my stuff in Ida and in Michael, etc. There's uh, Bill Murray. Yes, that's really his name. He's the guy that invited me to have me booked on the show. And um, Jennifer, I think was her name. But you get the idea. That's the guy there. That's the guy, the legend. All right, Dr. Neil Frank on Weather Brains. And there's uh, another doctor. I think that's uh, another Dr. Neil, that guy from New York. Check it out, Weather Brains. It's really, really fascinating. Um, and you know, Neil Frank's 90 years old. I didn't know that. He still looks like he couldn't be a day over 65. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, I'll put that link, as I said, in today's video description. All right? All right, plenty to keep an eye on as we end the month of September. Again, nothing to worry about land-wise right now. Will that hold into October? We shall see. That's what we're here for, to keep track of that kind of stuff and see what develops. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.